Hi guys, this is Emma at The Vlog Lady and today I'm going to be talking about some theories and some thoughts I had since the last episode of Twin Peaks. I've had a lot of comments on my last video, my reaction and review of episode 5 of Twin Peaks and lots of people have lots of great theories and thoughts about what's going on and what might potentially happen in the future. Um, I'm going to try and come up with some new stuff today if um, anything I mention has been talked about by other fans, I apologise. I want to give a spoiler warning in case any of this stuff turns out to be true again. The first thing I'm going to talk about is Richard Horn. Now, a lot of people after my video thought that I was not condoning this character enough. I in no way think that that character was um, attractive in any way and what he did was okay but because I compared him to Laura Palmer some people thought that I was trying to say that he was a decent guy. Um, that was not my intention at all. I did think immediately of the scene with Laura and Donna in Firewalk With Me when I saw the Richard Horn scene because of the fact that Richard Horn was giving off a similar energy to Laura in that scene and it was a similar energy of I'm angry, I'm defensive, I'm predatory. If we think about Laura, you know, she, she grabbed the crotch of that guy and she said, do you want to fuck the homecoming queen? She was dismissive of Donna, her best friend in that scene. She was just very messed up, Laura, at that point in her life. And we saw it all in the scene. And I kind of felt perhaps this Richard Horn guy could be in the same situation. Another thing about that scene which reminded me of Laura was the fact that Richard Horn said to the girl, I'm gonna laugh when I fuck you. And Laura actually did laugh when she had sex with Bobby Briggs. I think it might have been for the first time and Bobby was a virgin. And she laughed when Bobby orgasmed. And this was subsequently relayed to Dr. Jacoby who then gave this information to Bobby and humiliated him in, in a way. So again, that, that reminded me of Laura. Lots of people saying that the Richard Horn's mannerisms remind them of Audrey Horn, and there is a huge possibility, I think, that Audrey could be this guy's mother. And of course, lots of people theorizing about the fact that Richard Horn could be the product of Audrey Horn and Evil Coop. What a thing to think about. <laughs> if this guy really is part of Evil Coop, then, then what is he? Is he real? What would that mean for the character? Would he be part of the Black Lodge? Part of, you know, part of his soul? Would that belong to the Black Lodge? I just don't know, but I think it's an amazing possibility. Of course, Richard could be Jerry's son and he could be Ben's son. He could be some relate relation that has never been mentioned before. I quite like the idea of him actually being Ben's son. Um, I think that him being Audrey's much younger brother is quite an interesting angle for that. Uh, because of the fact we know that Ben Horn has still been playing around. The first scene we saw with him and Jerry, Jerry asked whether he was interested in the Ashley Judd character and he said, you know, that's never stopped you before because she's married. Um, so we know that Ben Horn has continued to play around with different women for the past 25 years. I just wanted to mention Richard Horn again because of the fact that so many people in my last video um, had a, a very extreme reaction to that scene and didn't like that I compared the character to, to Laura. And, I, and a part of me thinks that, you know, nobody can accept the comparison to Laura because of the differences of gender here, because if we think about Laura, if, she, if Laura had have been a boy and was doing some of the things she did to the, the people around her, it would have proved very unacceptable more so than I think than if she was a woman. Okay, the second thing I want to talk about is Agent Cooper. We are slowly seeing him recognize a few things and I know some people were saying that maybe it's just going to take time before he remembers who he is and returns to normality and other people were saying that he's missing something. The thing that is missing that has been referred to is part of Cooper and that thing needs to be returned before Cooper can be himself. So I wanted to look at what potentially was missing. I know some people were saying perhaps it's his shoes, he left them behind when he came through the electrical socket. Some people are saying that perhaps it's the gold ball that Dougie was turned into and that the, the gold ball needs to be returned to the good coop before he can fully regain his senses. Um, and I sort of expanded on that idea um, with my theory and some of, some of the uh, scenes in 
episode five. Um, the scene in particular that I wanted to think more about was the scene with Sonny Jim. Sonny Jim looked so sad in this scene, and Cooper did as well. They were both miserable. And Sonny Jim was kind of isolated on his own, looked like he was sort of in a dream world. Cooper, meanwhile, was staring at the boy and crying, as if he understood something which we couldn't fathom. Or perhaps as if he didn't understand something, but emotion was the only way to express it. Sort of like a, a person with dementia doesn't really know what's wrong, but can feel something's wrong. My theory involves the idea of the gold ball. First of all, I want to refer to the secret history of Twin Peaks, and I'm going to read something from here that I, I was reading rereading this the other day and I came across this passage and I thought it was important in explaining this theory that I have. This is page 249 of The Secret History of Twin Peaks and it's the Jack Parsons section and Jack Parsons says, Alchemy isn't only about chemistry or turning base metals to gold. The medieval philosophers and alchemists knew this. Even Isaac Newton knew it, but their knowledge was lost until Crowley brought it back. You see, alchemy actually speaks to internal processes and a radical revolution in our spiritual development, transforming the base metal of primitive man to the gold of an enlightened soul. Okay, so there is a link there between the idea of gold and enlightenment. I also thought about the fact that Sonny Jim, when Cooper first meets Sonny Jim, he clutches his side. And I said this in a previous video that I wondered whether Sonny Jim was comprised of Cooper himself. Having bled in the Black Lodge, did Bob actually take some of that blood and transform it into a physical form? So where does Hawk come into this? Because Hawk's heritage was mentioned as a reason why Hawk will find out what's missing from Cooper. If we go back to the original series of Twin Peaks, there's a conversation between Cooper and Hawk in which Cooper asks Hawk about whether he believes in the soul. And Hawk says, um, and I don't have the quote to hand, but he says something like several, Blackfoot legend. And he mentions the fact that they give life to the mind and the body. And this is what made me think of Coop and the fact that the gold of Dougie could be the mind and the body of Sonny Jim could be the body. And they both need to be returned to good Coop in order for good Coop to be whole again. <laughs> it's kind of a twisted theory perhaps, but I just felt like Sonny Jim his behavior in this episode when he was in the car. He looked possibly like he was wilting a little bit and as if he knew something was desperately wrong. I, I don't know how these things could be returned to Coop, but possibly the fact that Sonny Jim and the gold ball are the missing parts of Coop and that's what need to be returned. Although the fact that the log lady said there is only one thing missing and it seemed like there was just one element perhaps makes this theory less believable. I did think about how Sonny Jim, if he is really part of Cooper and he needs to be returned to Cooper, the physical body of Cooper, how he could be returned to Cooper and I did think, well, perhaps Bob and evil Cooper arranged it so that the physical part of Cooper that was missing would be turned into this young boy and the only way that he could be returned would be maybe to kill him um, because <laughs> would would good Coop want to want to do that? To, um, no, but it's the kind of twisted thing that you can imagine Bob and evil Cooper doing together, kind of scattering the puzzle pieces of Cooper so that he can never really be a threat to them. I hope this makes sense. I really do. But next, I'm going to talk about the scene in the prison with evil Coop. And when I was re-watching that, it struck me that it was quite similar to the scene in Firewalk With Me when David Bowie's character, Philip Jeffries, turns up at the FBI headquarters, walks into the building and Cooper goes outside into the corridor, looks into the surveillance camera and then goes into the room where the surveillance camera TVs are and he is frozen on the screen. And the way that evil Coop was looking up um, at the surveillance cameras in this scene was very reminiscent of that and it made me wonder whether actually Evil Coop had somehow been able to be in two places at once 
the way he manipulated the, uh, the energy, the electricity in that scene, was very similar to how the lights and machines wouldn't work in the FBI headquarters when Philip Jeffries turned up. So last thing I want to tie in with, with the evil coop scenario is the fact that when I was rereading The Secret History of Twin Peaks and I came across the chapters which deal with the idea of the moon child, I think that I am buying into the theory that Agent Cooper himself is the moon child. Um, there are passages in the book that say that the moon child may or may not be the Antichrist and I think Agent Cooper and e Evil Cooper fall into that category very well because he is and he isn't the Antichrist. And, and I think the term Antichrist is a loose term in, in the fact that it is kind of related to Christianity in this sense of the term, but I think that in a broader sense the Antichrist is just someone who is very evil. In fact, I do wonder if Evil Coop's association with people like Phyllis um, was a result of him being connected to these people who attempted to bring forth the Antichrist, the moon child. If you haven't read The Secret History of Twin Peaks and you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the moon child, then this short paragraph kind of explains it. It says, Moon Child is both the title and subject of a 1923 novel by Crowley, Alistair Crowley, about a battle between two lodges of black and white magicians over an unborn child who may or may not be the Antichrist. As far as the body of the person that was lying with Ruth Davenport's head, it seems to be that might be Major Briggs and I, I do think this might be a way of connecting him back to Twin Peaks and connecting the whole story back to Twin Peaks. I know that Bobby said Major Briggs died in a fire but could his body have been missing? Could something else have occurred in which Major, Major Briggs was um, back, wrongly identified as the, the casualty in that incident? Could it have been a deliberate cover-up so that Major Briggs could carry on his work secretly and without fear of being harmed for a certain length of time? Maybe he didn't want his family involved when it was starting to get so deep. The fact that he... the fact that the ring was inside of this body who potentially is Major Briggs is an interesting point. Perhaps that the simplest solution is to say that Major Briggs had found Dougie and knew what Dougie was. It's clear from Major Briggs' last words in the dossier that he knew that something was terribly wrong with Cooper and that the message that he'd had about Cooper um, was not how he had interpreted it. So the idea of Major Briggs actually deciding that this was so important that he would need to fake his death or to carry on this investigation in secret is a plausible idea to me. So anyway, that's all I want to talk about today. I just thought I would go further into some thoughts I had about this episode and about the series in general. Um, thank you for watching today. If you like Twin Peaks and like David Lynch, please subscribe to my channel. You can leave your comments below if you have any thoughts on what I've said or theories of your own. And you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at The Vlog Lady. That's all.